Welcome to Cinemeric Live, application engineering explained easily and simply. Part of our video series that aims to present hands-on Cinemeric applications in next to no time. Today's subject is multi-face machining 3 plus 2 axes. We kick off today by explaining the basics of milling and clarifying some technical terms. This is followed by 3 plus 2 milling with Cinemeric Operate, in particular the swivel plane function with the Cycle 800, and then a practical example live on the machine. What do we mean by milling? Milling is a cutting procedure where the tool rotates at high speed around its own axis and removes material to follow the programmed contour. There are three basic axes in milling. These are linear axes. Firstly, the z-axis, the direction that the tool always comes from. Then, the x-axis and the y-axis. There are also three rotary axes. The c-axis rotates around the z-axis, a around x and b around y. If milling takes place only in the three main axes, it's called three-axis machining. You can see here a typical part for three-axis machining, in which the milling cutter is perpendicular to the machining surface, perpendicular to the workpiece. The material is removed by movements in the X and Y directions, and the infeed in the Z direction controls the depth of the pocket or contour. In addition to the three main axes, the two rotary axes can be used to reach any point in the working space with the required tool orientation. This is called 3 plus 2 machining and, as can be seen in the simulation, machining can be done in a swiveled state in the same way as in the non-swiveled state. In this case, the tool is positioned statically to the machining surface. Another variant is the dynamic orientation of the tool. This is called 5-axis simultaneous machining. The three main axes and the two rotary axes are moved at the same time, in other words, simultaneously. A typical application for this method is the impeller. It's easy to see here that these flowing contours could not be produced with a 3 plus 2 orientation, a static orientation of the tool. 5-axis simultaneous machining is required to produce such a part. The machine needs to have certain kinematic features in order to handle the two additional rotary axis movements. These are head kinematics, table kinematics or mixed kinematics. In our practical example, the machine features table kinematics. Now let's move from the machine kinematics to the control. With 3 plus 2 axis machining, the machining plane is set statically by the swiveling function. The swivel cycle in Cinemeric is called cycle 800. Without the swivel cycle, it would be difficult to envision the planes, because the swivel cycle automatically takes care of the swiveling and calculating. It means that all the technologies used in 3-axis machining can also be used in the swiveled plane. As can be seen here, there are several parameters that must be set. I'd now like to briefly review them in more detail. You select the swivel data record using the first parameter, TC. You can enter the tool to be used in the field below using Select Tool. Using the Retract parameter, you can select whether the tool should retract after swiveling. This parameter is important in order to prevent collisions between the tool and the workpiece. The animated elements indicate what retraction in Z and what retraction in Z, Y and X geometrically mean. Using the swivel parameter, with yes you specify that the rotary axes should then be subsequently positioned. With no, the swivel data is only saved and the rotary axes do not move. 
Here you can set whether the plane is swiveled from the initial state or, by selecting additive, the swivel plane is calculated based on the previous plane. Swiveling the machining plane is realized in three steps. The first step is the work offset in the initial state. This offset is realized by entering parameter x0, y0 and z0. The second step involves rotating the coordinate system, i.e. swiveling the machining plane. Depending on the dimension of the workpiece drawing, you can select between four different swivel modes. The third step is the work offset in the rotated state. This is reached by entering parameter x1, y1 and z1. I'd now like to briefly discuss the swivel modes. Axis by axis swiveling is the easiest to understand and is the most commonly used in practice. In this case, the individual axes of the coordinate system are considered and these are rotated through the specified number of degrees and in the specified sequence of axes. With the solid angle swivel version, the tool is first rotated around the z-axis and then around the y-axis. The second rotation is based on the first rotation. Angles of rotation are specified using alpha and beta. If a projection angle is selected, then rotation is realized with the coordinate system parameters. In practice, this version is only used if the inclined plane with these projection angles is specified in the workpiece drawing. The fourth plane swiveling version is direct swiveling. In this case, the workpiece coordinate system is not used as a reference, but the rotary axes of the machine directly. In this case, the angle of rotation of the rotary axes is specified, and for Z, the angle of rotation in the plane. Back to axis by axis swiveling. From the specified parameters, Cinemeric Operate calculates the position of the inclined surface. To realize this surface, depending on the machine kinematics, there are frequently two solutions as to how the machine rotary axes can be moved. This is defined by entering plus or minus. With the last parameter, you can set whether the tooltip is tracked when swiveling or whether it remains stationary in space. Once the swivel cycle screen form has been completely filled out, you can click on Accept and the swivel cycle is integrated in the program overview. I've prepared a sample workpiece to show clearly what is meant by swiveling. In the first step, the surface of the workpiece is face milled and a rectangular pocket is cut, all in the non-swiveled state. The side faces are created by swiveling 90 degrees in each case and the three inclined surfaces here are at an angle of 45 degrees. Various standard cycles are applied to these inclined surfaces. In this case, the engraving cycle, the pocket milling cycle and a drilling cycle. And now we'll see how everything is done directly on the machine. We now come to the practical work on the machine. In the first step, the plane surface on top is milled and the rectangular pocket cut out, all in the non-swiveled state. This is followed by milling the side faces, in each case at an angle of 90 degrees. In the next step, working directly on the control, I'll explain how the engraving cycle is executed on a 45 degree inclined surface. After selecting the swivel plane, the swivel dataset cycle 800, the required parameters are set. The required tool is selected, the temporary offset of the zero point to the actual swivel point. This simplifies the calculation of the angle of rotation. The swiveling is set axis by axis 
and of course, the number of degrees around which axis the swiveling is to be set. This is extremely important and all parameters have now been set. They are transferred to the program by pressing accept and then face milled at an angle of 45 degrees. This is followed by the engraving cycle on the preset swivel plane. The same process is used for the rectangular pocket and the drill holes, each on one of the other two 45 degree inclined surfaces. Let's sum up. During milling, the material is removed by the tool rotating around its own axis. This is done in 3 axis, 3 plus 2 axis or in 5 axis simultaneous mode. Why isn't 3 plus 2 the same as 5? The difference lies in the orientation of the tool, which is either static with 3 plus 2 or dynamic in 5 axis simultaneous mode and using Cycle 800 considerably simplifies the programming. Thank you for watching. See you soon.